What's up YouTube, it's your boy JB and we are here with a review for Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta Season 4 Episode... Oh, it's Episode 9, Savage Love. Alright you guys, the next week is the season finale. Interesting, 10 episodes and we got a season finale. But I know that I know that we're getting ready for Walk and Tammy, you know, their show. I'm not going to be reviewing Walk and Tammy. So, yeah. But I will be reviewing, you know, the other Growing Up Hip Hops. I will do New York and I will do, you know, the original Growing Up Hip Hop. But without further ado, you guys, let's get into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys. So this episode picks up where the last one left off. You guys remember? It was um, Brad having a conversation with, uh, what's her name? Johnny Blaze. So like I said in last week's review, I thought that that, like that editing, I knew it was cut and chopped. I knew that because I'm like, that, it just seemed out of place. But I mean, when it came back, you know, Brad was telling, you know, uh, Johnny how she felt. I didn't agree with what Brad was saying to Johnny at first, you know, talking about, you know, if you know if she changes up the arrangement of a song, how does she know that Johnny won't flip out? I'm like, that's kind of going a little extreme. I don't think Johnny has ever really gone off about the composition of a record. But okay, Brad, I'm I was like, I'll hear you out, Brad, because I love you, so I'll hear you out. So Brad did, you know, she did reel it back in, and she made it, you know, all make sense. And I'm like, that's what you could have said from the beginning. Because Brad compared it to herself, how, you know, people didn't, when she got out of, out of prison, people didn't want to work with her because of the situation that happened with her. So she's basically telling Johnny that your, your past and your reputation, it precedes you. So you might be saying that you're, you're changed, you know, you're doing things differently and better, but people are always, the first impression is a, as they always say, the first impression is a lasting impression. You never get a second chance to make a first impression on people. So, you know, and I think Johnny was listening to what she was saying. And, you know, Brad said to Johnny, like, you're super talented. Like, you, I mean, you play the piano and you sing. You're, you're a great singer. So no one's knocking her talent. It's just like, you know, it's just, again, her reputation. It's preceded her. So, you know, Brad says that, you know, when it comes down to working with Johnny, she'll consider, she'll think about it. And she, get, and she gets up and she gives Johnny a hug. And I'm like, well, that was sweet. So then um, we see everybody, you know, we see Bow Wow, we saw Pimpin', we saw Ayana, we saw Deb. So everybody was on their phones and they were, they were looking on, I guess, Shave Room, Ball Alert, stuff like that. And they saw that, you know, the young lady who said that Bow Wow was potentially the father of her child, they saw the alert. Now, Bow Wow is really actually at this point getting on my nerves. Because, you know, he's talking about it and I'm like, dude, you wouldn't be in this position if you had put a condom on because you had sex with a woman that you didn't know, number one. So, I mean, let's take out the possibility of her getting pregnant. You also still have to worry about, you know, STDs and STIs. Like, are you freaking serious? So then we see Bow Wow. So he goes and talks to his mama, Teresa. And when he first started telling her about it, Bow Wow was talking in circles. And then he said one thing. I'm like, this is mad ass disrespectful. When he said, like, who, who else you sleeping with? Which is not a bad question to ask, especially of someone that you don't know. But then there's 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 that there's the other caveat in that if you don't know her, why are you raw dogging someone that you don't freaking know? Like Bow Wow, he really needs to grow up at this point and stop trying to place blame on other people and other things. Like take accountability for your own stupid choices, basically. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So let's talk about Deb and Brad. So Deb and Brett, you know, they finally meet up and, you know, they talk about, they talk about Bow Wow. You know, Deb is talking about her, you might be an auntie soon. <clears throat> her, you might be an auntie. And she was like, that boy. Yeah, stupid. So then, you know, they're talking about, you know, the project that, you know, Deb is wanting to work on. 
And, you know, Brad is like, I don't know if Bow was going to jump on it because, you know, Bow was doing his own thing because he said Bow also has this album that he's trying to put out, you know, talking about his past relationships and he's saying names. And even Deb was like, that's a bad, I, you know, that's going to be a, a bad situation. Exactly. <clears throat> like, because I know he has Angela on there. I know he, ha who else is he? Black China. Like, basically, in a sense, that's you bragging on your manhood. Girl, what bow wow. Well. So then, <clears throat> so then Brat tells um, Deb that she met up with Johnny Blaze. And, you know, Deb was like, you know, I heard that you did meet up. <clears throat> I heard that you met up with her. And, you know, you know, Brad says, you know, I'm starting to see the change with Johnny. And, <clears throat> you know, Brad is still struggling with the idea of working on this project with Deb. That's where Brad is really at right now, is working on the project. <clears throat> and Brad is talking about the fact that she said, she said, you know, I want to work with Ree and I want to work with um, uh, Diamond. But she's because she says, you know, I got a studio in my house. Um, like we can work on this. It feels like I'm talking loud, but I know it's because I have these AirPods in. It just really feels like I'm talking loud. You guys, I hope I'm not talking loud to you. <clears throat> but, you know, Brad does tell her. She's not sure if she wants to like be on the project, but she does. <clears throat> she says she'll help her with it, but she doesn't know if she wants to physically herself be on it. So I guess what Brad was saying is she'll she'll be with Deb to produce it. Cool, nothing wrong with that. So Brad says. <clears throat> so Deb asks, "What about Johnny Blaze?" She says, "It's something I'll think about." So then we see Andy. So Andy goes over to Bow Wow's crib. Every scene we see Bow Wow in, if this dude is not in the, which it's a good thing that he's in the studio. But here's the thing with the studio. Where's that? Where's this? Does anybody know if that album has come out? Because I mean, I don't know when it's. To, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> When was this filmed is the question, because where is the album at? I haven't heard heads and tails about this album. So I'm kind of wondering if this album was just for the show. But you know what? It's neither here nor there. So Andy is telling Bow Wow that he's getting phone calls about this situation with the girl. And the whole time I'm looking at Bow Wow, Bow Wow is very nonchalant about it. It's like, dude, do you not hear what he's saying to you? He's telling you he's getting phone calls about it. People want to do interviews with you. Bow Wow said no ten interviews. I'm cool with that. But then when the man's talking about getting lawyers involved, he's still nonchalant. I'm just gonna chalk it up to the fact that Bow Wow was high because dude, you you realize this can go to court. Like this girl can take you to if this is your child. Nine times out of ten, this girl is gonna take you to court for what? For child support. But like I said, he was just he was out of it. But we're going to move on. All right, you guys. Next up, let's talk about Jessica and Brad. So you guys remember that um, Brad wants Jessica to move to Atlanta and, you know, leave everything, you know, move everything from New Orleans to Atlanta. So they're, you know, in the last, I think in the episode, two, episode, it was, if it wasn't last week's episode, it was the week before when they went to look at that one warehouse but you guys remember that Jessica didn't like it. So now they're looking at another warehouse and this one is, they said 1.9 mil, pretty close to $2 million. Now, Jessica does like the, you know, she does like it and it's just the price of it. And you know, Brad was like, well, we can negotiate and get it down. She was like, to what, 1.7 mil? And Brad was like, well, at least it's not, it's, it's a little further away from 2 million. Not that much so, but go off. So then um, Diamond calls Brad and she tells Brad that she needs to talk to her and she needs to talk to her in person. So then, you know, we it went to commercial and came back. So we see Diamond. She's sitting down waiting for Brad. And Diamond is telling about this endorsement deal where she it was with skincare and she brought pimping in on it as well. That was mistake number one right there. That was mistake number one. 
they always say, don't go into business with your friends, your family, and people that you're sleeping with. You just shouldn't do it. So I was kind of confused. So I guess, you know, Pimpin didn't like something in the contract, but I guess Diamond saying that Pimpin tried to flip it and make it seem like it was her when it got down to the point of, you know, signing. So they left there and they got into a whole argument with each other. And she says when they got home, you know, they continued to argue and at one point Pimpin's phone rang. So Pimpin got, took the phone call into another room. So she went to the room to ask him who it was. And he was being, you know, she said he was being flipping with her. And come to find out it was Bow Wow that was on the phone. So we see Pimpin, he went over to Bow Wow's crib. So this is where the things get like really confusing because Pimpin has his story and Diamond has her story. So Pimpin says after that, you know, she, she got all out rate and stuff. And, you know, she started, she told him to pack his stuff. Then she started throwing his toothbrush at him. She threw his toothbrush on the ground. Then she, you know, um, he wasn't, she said he wasn't, he said, you know, in the middle of him packing, she threw his stuff, you know, out the door. So, mind you, she's having this conversation with, with, uh, with Brad. So she's telling Brad that when it came down to her and pimping, he got abuse. He, it, it was, you know, it was verbally abusive. And, you know, Brad was like, did he hit you? She said, yes. Yeah. She said at one point he took her wig off, which I can see that. I could, I could see that him taking her wig off. And then she said he choked her. And I think she said he slammed her and that pissed Brad off. It, it actually pissed me off. But like I said, you guys, um, if you listen to the, if you watch the episode and listen to it, Diamond and Pimpin were telling two different stories because Pimpin kept saying she was hitting him. He got in his car. She got in the car behind him. She started kicking and all that stuff. So it's, it's, uh, you know, and I always say when it comes to a story, there are three sides to every story. There's your side, there's my side, and then there's what's in the middle so I don't know what to believe, but I will say when it comes down to a man, when it comes down to this, I always take the woman's side until I'm proven wrong. Diamond also said that, you know, he said he was going to go fuck another bitch and she was going to have another nigga at the crib. And then he also said to her, he called, she said he called her a slut. I'm like, damn, this is a, this is a woman that you sleeping with and been sleeping with. But you think she a slut? I don't understand it. I don't understand. But let's move on and wrap the episode up, you guys. All right. To wrap the episode up, you guys. So we see Johnny. So Johnny is in the studio. Love her voice. Amazing talent. So what they're doing is they're putting the, putting the finishing touches on, you know, this song that they're doing for Deb. So then the rest of the crew comes in. It's Re, it's Chevy. I finally know that dude's name. Chevy and Kai shows up. Also, Diamond shows up. I was so confused as to what Diamond had on, but you know, if Diamond liked it, I love it. So, you know, they talk about pimping, and you know, Kai overhears and he realizes that Diamond is free and single. So <laughs> Kai got a big ass smile on his face, and Diamond said, Look at him. He got a smile on his face. Um but Diamond says that, you know, she and Pimpin are no more. I would hope so, Diamond, because I'm going off of what you said, and I'm going to believe, I choose to believe you, that he abused you. So with you saying that he abused you, don't go back to a man that abuses you ever. You don't deserve that. Man or woman, nobody deserves to be abused in a relationship. So then we see Bow Wow at the end of the episode, he met up with Pimpin. So Pimpin is asking him about this situation with the girl. Are the test results in? And Bow Wow says, "Nah, they're coming in tomorrow." And then Bow Wow's about how he felt low when he saw it all over social media, and I'm like, "You are a hypocrite, Bow Wow." He talking about you know everything shouldn't be posted on social media. I'm like, "But don't you post just about everything on social media, Bow Wow?" It's like pot, meat, cattle, because that's exactly what it is with you. So then Bow Wow was asking Pimpin, are things officially over between he and Diamond? Pimpin is hemming and hawing about this situation. But then he says in this same scene that he wants to go to this album release party that Deb 
and Brad are having to, you know, talk to Diamond. And it was in that scene where he said he wanted to talk to her. I'm like, what do you want to talk to her about? Because if you said that she abused you and everything, she should be the one that, if, if she abused you, like you're saying, then I would think that she would be the one that would, need to, you would want her to come to you and apologize to you. So it makes me feel like what Diamond said was true. But you guys, that is the episode. Be sure to like this video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video. And until the next one, you guys, do me a solid favor out there. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, to wear your mask, and to socially distance. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yes, it definitely sounded like, like I was yelling because I had these in my ear the whole entire time. Um, what else? Also, you guys, go subscribe to the Planner channel, and I will catch you guys later. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the week's hottest topics, as well as Bell Collective and for growing. Nope, that's the wrong show because I'm talking about that now. Life after lockup. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.